Giesler with a first inning double. Jason Thompson with three hits and Bill Madlock with a run producing single led the way offensively in the Pirates 6 to 2 win last night. And Marvell Wynn who helped out with three runs scored turned in the catch of the game in the ninth inning helping Larry McWilliams win number 10 as Rod Scurry picked up the save. Tonight it's John Candelaria nine and six against Tom Seaver six and ten. It's the second game of the series the Pirates against the New York Mets. Welcome to Shea Stadium for tonight's game between the New York Mets and our Pittsburgh Pirates. This is the Pirate lineup for the game tonight. Leading off and playing center field, Marvell Wynn. Batting second at second base, Johnny Ray. Hitting third tonight, team captain Bill Madlock. Our cleanup hitter will be first baseman Jason Thompson. The right fielder and batting fifth will be Dave Parker. Batting sixth and playing left field will be Mike Eastler. The catcher tonight and hitting seventh, Tony Pena. Our shortstop batting eighth will be Dale Barra. And on the mound tonight for the Bucks with a record of nine and five, John Candelaria. Okay, Kent, thank you very much. Again, the Pirate lineup win Ray and Madlock, Thompson, Parker, and Easler, Pena, Barra, and Candelaria. And the New York Mets take the field. Tom Seaver going to the center of the diamond. Let's check the New York Mets starting lineup. And once again, here's John Sanders. John? Lanny, it'll be Mookie Wilson leading off and playing center field. Hubie Brooks at third and batting second. Keith Hernandez at first, batting in the number three spot. Clean up tonight, George Foster, the left fielder. A uh, last minute change. Dave Kingman originally scheduled to bat fifth and play right field, has an upset stomach. So Mark Bradley will be batting in the number five spot and put him in right field in place of Dave Kingman, who will be on the bench tonight. Brian Giles at second base tonight. Jose Okendo will be the shortstop in bat seventh. Junior Ortiz, the former pirate behind the plate, batting number eight. And out on the mound, Tom Seaver, the pitcher, will bat number nine. And during tonight's game, we'll have three Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes innings. The jackpot is now $800, so stay with us for all the home run sweepstakes excitement. Shea Stadium in New York, and the Bucks taking on the New York Mets for the eighth time this year. Pirates have won three, the Mets have won four. Bucks are one and two at Shea Stadium. What a race in the National League East, where the Pirates leading St. Louis by a half game, and the Cardinals and Expos getting together in Montreal tonight. One of the truly greats in baseball, Tom Seaver. 270 major league victories, only 166 losses, a 619 percentage. Seaver with the Mets. You recall that because the Atlanta organization drafted and signed Seaver illegally, violating the college eligibility rule, it was Commissioner Eckert who uh, decided to put Tom Seaver's name into a hopper. And as it turned out, the New York Mets picked Seaver's name out of that uh, small mini draft and the Mets were permitted to sign Tom Seaver to his first contract. Seaver a three time Cy Young winner 1969 1973 and 1975. Marvell win. Made that great catch in the ninth inning. Jim and Marvell talking about it at the top of our telecast. Win batting 261, four home runs and 12 runs batted in. The umpires for tonight's game, Bob Engel is behind the plate. Seaver's first pitch, ball one. Jim Quick at first, Paul Rungi at second, Dave Falone at third. Marvell, two hits and three runs scored last night. Tom Seaver falls behind Marvell, two balls, no strikes. Last night, win in the first inning, walked. Tom Seaver has been bothered by control problems this year. The control numbers are a little bit higher than you'd expect for a Tom Seaver. Fouled away, Junior Ortiz comes back to the seats, but no chance to get the foul ball. It's two and one. As you might expect, since they do have two baseball teams in New York, the George Brett situation is still very much in the news here in the Big Apple today. George Steinbrenner of the Yankees extremely upset. Uh, I think that's even being a little bit mild about the way George felt about what happened to the George in Kansas City. Called uh, George Steinbrenner, called the decision by American League President Lee McPhail absurd. Swing and a miss by Marvell Wynn. Good location with that Seaver fastball up and in. It's two and two. Tom Seaver, 
has been averaging just under four walks per nine innings of work. And consequently, the control has been some of the problem for Seaver, who's six and ten this year. Popped up. Okendo out, Foster in, and George Foster takes charge, one away in the fire at first inning. Well, Marvell win retired. Defensively, we we'll take a look at the swing of Marvell on the 2 2 pitch. He just went with a pitch. Looked like Seaver got the ball in a little bit on Wynn's fists, and George Foster made the catch. Tom Seaver's last outing was against his former Cincinnati Reds teammates on Sunday and was the losing pitcher. Johnny Ray, the batter. First ball hitting. Center fielder Mookie Wilson. Makes the catch two down. So you've met Foster and Wilson by way of the first two outs of the uh, ball game. Mark Bradley is playing right field for the Mets and the batter Bill Madlock. Bill was one for four last night and he starts tonight with a 334 batting average but Madlock is number two in the league. Bill was number one last night but George Hendrick had quite a night for the St. Louis Cardinals in the doubleheader at Montreal last night. So Hendrick is back up on top with a 337 mark Madlock second 334 and dog with 10 home runs 48 runs batted in Hendrick went six for nine in the Cardinal doubleheader last night Cardinals really exploded in that second game after they sneaked away with one in the first Tom Seaver hit the outside corner strike two. Oh two pitch. Hernandez teams with Seaver covering. Score at three to one. That's all for the Pirates in the top of the first inning. Well, Tom Seaver sets the Bucks down in order after a half inning of play. It's the Pirates, nothing in the New York Mets coming to bat. Bottom of the first inning, John Candelaria on the mound for the Pirates. The candy man is nine and six with a 388 earned run average. Full weekend of baseball action for you from Shea Stadium. The Pirates and Mets get together late tomorrow afternoon. We'll be on the air at 4 o'clock. And then a doubleheader on Sunday. Off day for the ball club on Monday for the Bill Madlock Golf Tournament. Bill, the honorary chairman of the Bill Madlock Celebrity Golf Tournament to benefit Sickle Cell. Pirates defensively. Bill Madlock at third. Dale Barra, the shortstop. Johnny Ray at second with Jason Thompson at first. In the outfield, Mike Easler in left, Marvell Wynn in center, Dave Parker in right, Tony Pena doing the catching. Tony Pena went over to chat with the trainer Tony Barderone for a moment. Now we're ready. Bottom of the first inning, Mookie Wilson, center fielder of the Mets, batting 253, four home runs and 34 runs batted in. Here's Candelaria's pitch. Ball is bunted and drops in foul territory, strike one. Chatting with, uh, excuse me, John, uh, chatting with Bobby Valentine before the game, the third base coach of the Mets, and he was saying that one of the problems for the Mets is that Mookie Wilson's on base percentage is not good this year. He's walked only 15 times, and you'd expect the walk number to be a little bit higher for the leadoff hitter. And if it was, his number of 35 stolen bases, which is good, would be even better and also would help the Mets offense, obviously, if he would get on base. Talking with uh, Bobby Valentine, he feels that uh, Jose Okendo should bat a bit higher in the order. Not that he's second guessing Frank Howard, he just believes that Okendo will be a little better hitter higher in the order. Swing and a miss, and it's 0 2. Candelaria, 1 0 against the Mets this year, 12 and 5 lifetime against New York. Candelaria, 8 and 2 lifetime at Shea Stadium. And you know, back. for the last couple of years, July has been Candy's month. A year ago, he was 5-0 and in July and was the National League Pitcher of the Month. This year, he is 3-0 and in July. The other interesting thing about July is the Pirates now have won 20 games in the month of July. And that's the first time they've won that many in July since 1979. Ball club since 1950 has never won more than 20. Lined into the seats on the third base side. Mookie Wilson batting right-handed. 253 average with four home runs and 34 RBIs. Had two hits last night. And the bouncer into the pirate dugout. 
Kent Biggerstaff did the starting lineup for us tonight. Lee Tunnel and Jose De Leon, they teamed up for back to back complete games earlier in the week. Lee with a complete game victory Tuesday night against San Diego. De Leon, the start on Wednesday and the complete game. Johnny Ray to Jason Thompson scored four to three, one down. Johnny Ray bothered, bothered by the bad heel over the weekend, but all right now. One down here's Hubie Brooks, third baseman of the Mets, is batting 280. He has five home runs and 38 runs batted in. Johnny Ray, speaking of his heel, I know he's still taking a little treatment for it, still getting some work on it. Uh, I don't think people realize sometimes that if you play baseball and you have to be out there every day, or certainly almost every day, even when you do come back, in many cases the injury may be what you consider healed, but what we might not really consider healed. You know what I mean? Yeah, no question about it, and I think hitters Brooks lines a base hit down the right field line Parker into the corner and Brooks into second base with a one out double Hubie Brooks with a one out double here in the bottom of the first inning no score in the game you know that was an instance as he lined the ball down the right field line everybody seemed to be standing still because the airplane was going over just at that time and it's like it didn't really happen because the noise was such that you didn't you didn't hear the crack of the bat and all of a sudden the ball's going down the right field line. So the runner at second base the batter first baseman Keith Hernandez to follow up on your point uh, John I think uh, hitters like to get back in the lineup as quickly as possible they're concerned that if they stay out too long it'll hamper their timing. Here's the pitch to Hernandez and ball one. Keith Hernandez 0 for 4 in last night's game batting 280 with five home runs since joining the New York Mets and the much talked about trade from the St. Louis Cardinals. One ball one strike. Wasn't it Hernandez that struck out three or four times against Candelaria earlier in the year. Now right. I think about it. I believe that was uh, when we were in St. Louis wasn't it. I think he struck out three times. Line shot, base hit, left center. Brooks scores, and the Mets take a one-nothing lead. Well, they didn't strike out that time. He went right with the pitch from Candelaria. Got enough of it to get it over the head of Dale Barrett short. As you can see, it was on the outside part of the plate. Barrett can't get to it. It drops in, and Brooks, who has good speed, turns third and comes on to give the Mets the lead. Indeed it was we were talking about uh, Hernandez having trouble against Candelaria It was in the season opener at Bush Stadium on April the 5th Candelaria pitched a four hitter and struck out 10 Cardinal batters and had the number of Keith Hernandez in that season opener but Hernandez gets a bit of revenge here in the bottom of the first inning the Mets have the lead and George Foster the batter Candelaria waiting for some of the aircraft to clear Foster batting 251 16 home runs and 52 runs batted in. Set. Ball bobbled by Marvell Wynn. Hernandez going to third and Foster to second base. Hernandez made a wide turn, throw to third. He got back. <laughs> Hernandez was coming around third as if he might try to score, but Bobby Valentine put up a stop sign and Hernandez slipped in foul territory. At first, Bobby was waving him home. Let's see Marvell. As it goes off the end of his glove, he doesn't know that he's lost the ball for a moment. And tries to relay it in. The throw went to second, got away from Johnny Ray, and by the time Jason Thompson picked it up, Hernandez was just able to scramble back. And it's being scored a single for Foster and an error on center fielder Marvell Wynn. So Foster's at second base with Hernandez at third and one out. You could see on that replay that Marvell had taken his eye off the ball for a split second. He wanted to see where Hernandez was. Now Mark Bradley getting the start because Dave Kingman was scratched. Pirate infield up about halfway almost three quarters in some cases. That's one Pirates nothing. No balls two strikes. Candy needs a strike out here to get to that two out situation so he can drop the infield back and try to get out of this inning with no more damage. Look at the Pirate infield setting itself with a runner at third and a runner at second and one out. Candy got the strikeout. 
He was out in front of Bradley, no balls and two strikes, and got Bradley to chase a strike that was out of the zone. It was low and inside. Well, as we always hear the rooks say, don't mess with them, go get them when you got them in that situation. And Candy did, threw a good breaking pitch inside. That's one of John, Jim's favorite lines, isn't it? Close them out. Yep. Two down. And Brian Giles, second baseman of the Mets, batting 240 with a home run, 13 RBIs. A little bit of Larry McWilliams there as he went inside on him to get the strikeout. Candelaria likes to work his breaking pitch inside, go with the fast stuff away. Larry McWilliams last night likes to throw the fast stuff on the inside part of the plate and has been very successful in getting strikeouts that way, especially against right against right-handed batters. Tony Pena, quick conference with Candelaria back in behind the plate. Mets one of the Pirates, nothing bottom of the first inning. And John with a full windup. Fouled off, strike one. Skips past Al Monchak, who is at the corner of the dugout, helping to set the defense. Hernandez at third, Foster at second, two outs, one run in. Fastball one and one. Candy has been averaging less than two walks per nine innings of work this year. His control has been near perfect and averaging seven and a half strikeouts per nine innings of work. Two balls, one strike. Bobby Baylor played second base last night. Brian Giles in at second base for Frank Howard tonight. Howard taking over the ball club and George Bamberger resigned. Pulled down the third base left field side. Two balls and two strikes. You know, you mentioned strikeouts. Candelaria coming into the game with 100 now has 101. We have three pitchers in the top 10 in the National League in strikeouts. Larry McWilliams is third with 135. Then Candy, 101 now. And Rick Roden is in the number 10 spot with 91 strikeouts. So the starters have been getting a lot of strikeouts. Candy can move up tonight. Rick Roden pitches tomorrow. He can move up. Two men on, one to nothing. The New York Mets lead bottom of the first inning. Candelaria misses with a fastball. Three and two. Brian Giles batting with first base open. Giles has been tough against the Pirates. I believe he's batting about 381 against the Bucks this year, and he gave us some real problems early. Eight for 21. Payoff pitch. Bold foul. He went down, and Godwood was a breaking pitch low and inside. I think we ought to let everybody know that uh, Lanny Frateri has established the curfew rules and the training regimen that Mr. <laughs> Rooker will have to go through for the remainder of the road trip since he will be out there on the mound tomorrow afternoon before the game in the old timers game. And of course we plan to keep a close eye on what happens out there. That's right. I told Jim to check and see what time sunup is tomorrow and make sure he beats that curfew. <laughs> Hernandez at third with Foster at second Candelaria. Ready with another payoff pitch to Giles. Struck him out. Foul tip. Pena held on. So Candelaria comes back with a couple of strikeouts. And the New York Mets have to settle for just one run. Three hits in the inning. One pirate error. But it was not costly as the Mets strand two. One inning of play. New York one. Pittsburgh nothing. Jason Thompson leads off against Tom Seaver in our Giant Eagle jackpot inning, and our contestant is Florence Cruzen of Pittsburgh. Florence, you have a chance to win $800 worth of Giant Eagle groceries and, in addition, certificates for 24 12 ounce cans of Pepsi Free. Jason with three hits last night, batting 275, 14 home runs, 51 runs batted in. Seaver comes over the rainbow and misses one and one. Parker to follow, then Easler fouled off, and that is the third time now in less than a week that Jason Thompson has fouled a pitch off his body. You could see Jason oh. reacting immediately as the ball goes down and gets him. He still hasn't picked up his bat. Every time that that's worse is when it's real cold, I would imagine. It's never real good, but no. it, <laughs> you're right when it's cold out. April and some of those games in Montreal, it can really sting. One-two pitch. 
Second baseman Brian Giles camps under it. And he makes the catch one away. Jason Thompson retired. The Mets have a one nothing lead. RBI single by Keith Hernandez after a one out double by Hubie Brooks. His right fielder Dave Parker. Dave is batting 281. Six home run, 35 runs batted in, was one for four last night, and Dave swinging the bat at a 390 pace since the All Star break. Batting for Florence Cruzen of Pittsburgh, $800 in our jackpot. Noted up on the board here in New York that in a little over a week from today, Simon and Garfunkel will perform here at Shea Stadium. Of course, Simon and Garfunkel appearing at Three River Stadium tomorrow night. Such hits as I Am a Rock, Bridge Over Troubled Waters, Mrs. Robinson. Speaking of Mrs. Robinson, uh, her husband Donnie scratched from the start on Sunday against the Mets. Jose De Leon will get the start in the doubleheader against the Mets. One out, nobody on. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Outside. Okendo. On to Hernandez. Parker's retired. Scored six to three, two down. Ball game in the top of the second with the New York Mets leading one to nothing. See the young man that they're so high on in the Mets organization. Okendo coming up with a strong throw, and he brought it up pretty much overhand to make the throw across and was able to get Parker with room to spare. So Dave uh, takes a seat in between Richie Hebner and Bob Skinner. They'll talk about what Tom Seaver is throwing. Mike Easler batting 336, seven home runs, 35 RBIs. Now that's twice we've seen that pitch from Seaver. I don't think I've ever seen him throw that pitch before. Not twice in one inning, I've not seen it. Fouled off, and Easler takes a little bit of that foul ball. It's one and one. Mike batting for Florence Cruzen in our jackpot inning. Bucks are doing more damage to themselves than they are Tom Seaver at this point. Well, as John mentioned earlier in our telecast, Tom Seaver pitched a three hit shutout over the Pirates on April the 20th. Hit well to right center field. Mookie Wilson back. It's gone. And a home run for Mike Easler. Jumping on the 1 1 pitch from Tom Seaver. That's home run number eight. For the hitman, and the Pirates have tied the game at 1 1. And congratulations as Easler gets the congratulations from the dugout. Let's take a look at the home run swing again. Wasn't a bad pitch, maybe up just a little bit, and Mike Easler really got the bat on it and was able to drive it. Wilson went to the wall but had no chance, and we've got a giant eagle winner. Congratulations to Florence. You'll be receiving $800 in Giant Eagle groceries, $800 in certificates, plus certificates for 24 12 ounce cans of Pepsi Free. Tony Pena batting 289. It's a ground ball to Giles. Pena's out 4 to 3, but the Bucks come up with a run. One hit in the inning, home run for Mike Easler. Nobody left on base. Congratulations again to Florence Cruzen, an $800 Giant Eagle winner. Go to the bottom of the second. It's the Pirates one and the New York Mets one. Ray Tannehill and Patty Burns tonight at 11. Well, after we finish this weekend in New York, New York, the Pirates return home to Three River Stadium and the start of a six game homestand next Tuesday night, August the 2nd. The Phillies are in town for three days and then the Montreal Expos in Pittsburgh next weekend. And operators are standing by right now at Three River Stadium. 323-1150 is the phone number. Chance for you to order your tickets for the upcoming Pirate Homestand. It should be a dandy with the Phillies coming in and then the Montreal Expos. 1-1 one, one ball game. Jose Okendo batting 231. No home runs. 14 runs batted in. Kendo, Ortiz, and Seaver. 
fouled back strike one. Very high on this young shortstop he was called up. During the year and Bobby Baylor was on the disabled list Some talk they might send him back down but he played so well they elected to keep him up here. Had been a switch hitter in the minor leagues but the Mets have him just batting from the right side. One one pitch and lashed outside of third one ball two strikes. Okendo appears if he's he's telling keeps telling himself something like he's trying to remind himself of the basics. Now Candy waiting for Mike Easler. Mike was out of position in left field and went over to get that foul ball. Fly ball to left field. Left center Mike Easler's over and makes the catch one away. The Mets got a run on the bottom of the first inning. RBI singled by Hernandez. Pirates tied the game in the top of the second on Mike Easler's eighth home run of the year. Here's Junior Ortiz. Shortstop Dale Barra stays down on it, fires to Jason Thompson, two down on the New York Mets second. A recent poll of was held in Sporting News. No, not Sporting News. Sports Illustrated, I believe. Put this ballpark in one of the top five worst infields in the National League. The worst being, according to that poll, Olympic Stadium in Montreal, but Shea Stadium, along with Candlestick Park, Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, and Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego listed as the top five worst infields. I was surprised when I saw that poll, John, that Dodger Stadium was not listed. Because the I Dodgers have had a lot of trouble there this year. Many of the players that come into Pittsburgh commenting about the Three River Stadium carpet, feeling that because it's new and the, the new texture, it's one of the better infields. Well, I think now that we've been everywhere, I think it's probably the best right now playing mm -hmm. surface in the National League. You ever see anyone just eat the chocolate before? No, I never have. What do you do with the other half of that? Swing and a mess. Seaver strikes out. And we'll leave that rhetorical question unanswered. <laughs> the Pirates and John Candelaria set down the New York Mets. One, two, three. We go to the top of the third with the Bucks and Mets tied 1 1, and we'll be right back. You know, Atari and the Pirates are a lot alike. They both supply the fans here at Three Rivers with plenty of fireworks. The Pirates supply them on the field, and Atari supplies them off the field. And when you put them together, it makes for a great night. Well, that's what we have planned on Saturday, August 20th. We'll be playing the Cincinnati Reds at 7.05, and immediately following the game, all fans will be treated to the first Sky concert ever at Three Rivers. It'll be a night to remember. Saturday, August 20th. Call 323-1150 for tickets. Dale Barra leads off the top of the third. Dale Barra grounding out to second baseman Brian Giles. They're one out in the third. The Pirates and Mets are tied 1-1. Here's John Candelaria. See if Candy's going to bat left-handed or right-handed. It will be right-handed this time against Tom Seaver. One one ball game in the third. Foul out of play, strike one. The Phillies have a one to nothing lead over the Cubs in the third inning at Veterans Stadium. And Montreal leads St. Louis one to nothing in the fifth inning in Montreal. Neil Allen pitching for the Cardinals tonight. And Brent Smith is the Expo starter. You know I wonder when John decides which way he's going to bat. Now we've talked about the bunt situation. As a batter five of his hits have come from the right side and one of his one of his hits while batting left handed. I think the situation dictates it either because of the bunt or we saw in a recent game that Candy hit left handed in an opportunity to drive in a key run. Down low two balls two strikes.
Now the 2 2 pitch and fouled into the seats on the first base side. First row of seats. I understand that uh, Jonah Tolley. Is out in uh, New York City this weekend seeing the Pirates in action. And also. Chris and Ed Lampkin. They're here in New York this weekend. They're on their way to Cooperstown. They're going to see the uh, Hall of Fame induction ceremony. The Hall of Fame game ceremonies are on Sunday, and the Hall of Fame baseball game is Monday. Candelaria strikes out two down. This is a Hall of Fame weekend. But with a Hall of Fame game tomorrow, Steelers against the New Orleans Saints in Canton, Ohio. And then the baseball induction ceremonies on Sunday in Cooperstown. The Cardinals and Orioles will play the baseball Hall of Fame game on Monday. Marvell Wynn. Fly to center is first or fly to left rather his first time up takes a strike the Pirates and Mets are tied at 1 1. Ball game in the top of the third. Hernandez flips to Seaver covering and the Pirates go down 1 2 3. Well the Bucks have had just one hit off Tom Seaver that was the second inning home run for Mike Easler. After two and a half the Pirates and Mets are tied at 1-1. We'll be right back. Simon and Garfunkel together again tonight at 11. Bottom of the third coming up. Great to have you with us tonight. Our broadcast crew John Sanders Jim Rooker and Lanny Frateri along with our producer Ray Markoff. Our uh, normal director uh, Dave DeMann and I with us in New York we pick up the uh, camera feed from the New York Mets crew and Bill Webb our director here in New York will be with Dave DeMann again when we get into Philadelphia on the next road trip. Mr. Flashdance himself. Here's Mookie Wilson leading off the bottom of the third in a one one ball game. Received a note recently telling us that the uh, North Baldwin Pony team won the South Pittsburgh Pony Association Baseball Championship. I wish the congratulations to those fine athletes. And also say hello to a great pirate fan George McKinney. We're in the bottom of the third a 1 1 ball game. Candelaria and Seaver giving us pretty much the kind of ball game we expected. I think you're right. And also before we get out of the, this half of the third we have to finish up our remark about eating half of the ice cream here, <laughs> here in Shea Stadium. They bring around ice cream to the broadcast booth and also to the rest of the press box area. And it's in a little cup and it's half of it's chocolate and half of it's vanilla. Lanny eats only the chocolate side. I assume that Ray Markoff over there eats the rest of it. Is that right? I don't know what happened to the, the other half of it. To be honest with you. He's very good at it too. He ate the whole thing and you didn't even know it. So I'm going to miss two and two. When I was a kid, you know, you buy those, is it Neapolitan yep. three flavors? You'd eat one. Just the chocolate. <laughs> And I always hated it because they put the chocolate in the middle of the other two. I bet your mom liked it too. 2-2 two -two pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Third, no, fourth strikeout for Candelaria. Got two in the first, one in the second, and now one here in the third. Well, oh, John Candelaria has always enjoyed pitching against the New York Mets, especially in New York. Candy has 12 lifetime victories against the Mets, has beaten only one other team more. And that's the Chicago Cubs. John's beaten the Cubbies 14 times. Third on the Candelaria list is San Francisco 11. Hubie Brooks doubled and scored the Mets run in the first inning. Strike boy Candy appears to be in a good groove right now. Throwing very hard too right now. And when he gets that fastball over, it really makes his breaking pitches devastating. Well, the other day I sat down to work on a. Uh, baseball card on John Candelaria and I asked John about his no hitter against the Dodgers August of 76 and about the sixth game of the World Series is Candelaria and to Colby shut out the Orioles in game six but John's most memorable game he claims is his first major league game feeling that he had uh, it was a dream to get to the big leagues to be a big league pitcher and the fact that he made it that first game so very special to him. Fouled away, one ball, two strikes. Yeah. 
San Diego leading Atlanta one nothing in the third as you take a look at Rick Roden Lee Mazzilli and Larry McWilliams McWilliams won last night Roden will pitch tomorrow as for Lee Mazzilli he also serves who only sits and waits Been kind of a tough couple of weeks but as Lee has indicated it's been a little easier with the ball club winning it's always a little easier sitting in a winning ball club than being on the bench for a team that is not winning. 2 2 pitch. Knocked down. Candy's got time, throws him out. John Candelaria coming down the front part of the mound to throw Hubie Brooks out at first. Let's watch it again. Ball's on the outside part of the plate. Brooks drives it up the middle. Candy drops the glove, got a piece of it, and then kind of flipped it away from himself as it ricocheted out of the glove. He had to track it down, turn, and throw a strike to Thompson, and he does. Beats him by a step. So two down, and the Candy man has now retired seven straight Mets hitters. It brings up Keith Hernandez. Montreal has a 1-0 lead over St. Louis in the fifth inning. The uh, Expos run on a home run by Andre Dawson, his 23rd of the year. Here the Pirates and Mets are tied 1 1. It's a rather warm, muggy evening in Shea Stadium as it was last night. And Larry McWilliams admitted today to being bothered somewhat by the humidity last night, which affected the way he pitched. He said it really bothered him. Larry had to leave in the ninth inning last night. To Culvey and Scurry came on, did the relief work. One ball and one strike, two outs and nobody on. And he does not get the call from Bob Engel, and it's two balls and a strike. I mentioned Dawson with his 23rd home run of the year tonight, so Dawson is tied with Mike Schmidt for the home run lead. Time had been called. The pitch will not count. Candy elected to follow through and deliver the pitch. By the way, in case you've noticed the little object in the bill of Candy's cap, every now and then you'll get a close up. You see that it, there's an object on the bill of Candy's cap. It's not a star. It's not a Willie Stargell star. It's a it's a little bee, a little stick on bees. And I asked Candy about it one time. He said that a young fan gave it to him, and it's just about the time that he started winning again and continues to wear it. Hey, you got a shot of it right there. Three and two, two down. Payoff pitch. Strike three called. Hernandez down on strikes. Candelaria with five strikeouts in three innings pitched. Last eight New York Mets batters have gone down. And after three innings of play, it's the Pirates one and the Mets one. Thursday night, August 25th, is Cool Vent Energy Pain Replacement Window Night here at Three River Stadium as the Bucks meet the Houston Astros. If you're a homeowner and are willing to watch an in-home Cool Vent window demonstration, you can be Willie Stargell's guest at the game. And here's Willie to tell you about it. Just call the number on your screen and ask for a demonstration of those terrific Cool Vent energy-saving windows. I know they're terrific because I have Cool Vent windows on my home. And since first base seems almost like home to me, Coolvent put this display here so that I could show you this window. It tilts in for cleaning, never needs painting, and you can choose colors to match both the exterior and the interior of your home. There's a 25% TV special discount on now, too. Your Coolvent factory representative will give you the whole story when he brings you your free tickets to Coolvent night here at Three Rivers. Remember, to qualify, you must be a homeowner and watch a no-obligation in-home demonstration. Please call now. The demonstration and the baseball tickets are free. Participating advertisers in the next three innings are Bell of Pennsylvania, Giant Eagle. If it's not a Giant Eagle, it's just a supermarket. And United Airlines. People who fly for a living fly United. Johnny Ray opens it up as we go to the top of the fourth inning. One run, one hit, one error for the Pirates so far in this second game of the series and for the Mets. One run, three hits and no errors. The Mets getting all of their runs, all of their hits in the first inning and their one run. Pirate run came in the second on a home run off the bat of Mike Eastler. So it's 1-1 as Tom Seaver opens up with a ball to Johnny Ray. Johnny fly to center his first time up. Now 
Now it's one and one. And Johnny Ray coming into the ball game tonight against the Mets batting 250. Johnny now seven for 29 against New York pitching in 1983. Two and one the count. Tom Seaver out on the mound. Now 38 years old in his 17th major league season. And Johnny Ray is aboard. That's the first walk of the ball game for Seaver. He also has one strikeout. It'll bring up Bill Madlock. Bill bounced out to first baseman Keith Hernandez in the first inning. Seaver opened the game by retiring the first five Pirates before Mike Eastley hit a home run. And he had set down another four until the walk to Ray. Pitch to Madlock is ball one. One ball, no strikes. Nobody out. Johnny Ray at first. Seaver looks him back and Madlock steps out. A little throw over. Hernandez will hold him on. You get a shot of Al Monchek, pirate coach at first. Joe Lynette, as usual, over third, and another throw over. Seaver has gone twice in a row. Madlock had an RBI last night. Fouls that one at home plate. And that one caught part of Bill Madlock. He's the third pirate batter to drill himself with a foul ball. Jason Thompson did it. Mike Eastler did it. And now Bill Madlock will walk around a little bit. His average right now at 333. Started the night second in the National League. In batting. And Bill's hit last night was his first against the Mets this year. So he's one for nine against New York pitching now. A lifetime average of 296 against Met pitching. A runner at first, nobody out. Ray is running. Madlock grounds it to the right side. Giles only play is to first and Johnny Ray is at second with one out. So Bill did his job hitting the ball to the right side. Johnny Ray was running and he's at second. First baseman. So a chance now for Jason Thompson to give the Pirates the lead. JT popped up to the second baseman Giles his first time up. Philadelphia four Chicago or rather Philadelphia one Chicago nothing in the fourth inning. Montreal one St. Louis nothing in the bottom of the fifth in Olympic Stadium. Cardinals making a pitching change also. Called strike to Jason Thompson. Other scores in the National League Cincinnati uh, scoreless in Houston with the Astros batting in the bottom half of inning number one. Third inning in San Diego the Padres lead Atlanta one nothing. Missed outside that time L.A. and San Francisco coming up later. American League, New York and Chicago rained out. Or at least delayed by rain. They haven't made that final. Thompson swinging a miss. One and two now to JT. Toronto leads Cleveland 3 0 in the bottom of the fourth. Kansas City and Detroit. Delayed by rain. No score. Milwaukee, Boston. Milwaukee leading Boston 3 1 in the bottom of the fourth. Texas and Baltimore tied 3 3 in the bottom of the third. And Oakland and California. A little bit later. Right here it's 1 1. Johnny Ray represents the go ahead run for the Pirates with one out. Jason Thompson, a 1 2 pitch. And it's 2 2. Fans do not agree. Bob Engel said it missed. Thompson is 2 for 9 against the Mets this year. Called strike 3 on the inside corner. Seaver gets the strikeout of Thompson. It's his second of the game. We'll take a look at the pitch again right on the inside part of the plate. It tailed back a little bit away from Jason and caught the corner and Bob Engel called him out. So that will leave it up to Dave Parker. Dave grounded out to shortstop Jose Okendo his first time up. Missed inside, ball one. Dave had a hit last night. 
a looping double down the left field line. Came in the first inning and he came on to score on a double by Mike Eastler. Swing and a miss by Dave Parker. And as you can see, Tom Seaver still able to get plenty on that fastball. Parker was no match for it that time. The ball's up. Dave can't get it. Fouls it back. Keep the people sitting in the first row alert behind home plate. One ball and two strikes with two outs. Inning opened when Johnny Ray walked. He moved up to second on a ground ball by Bill Madlock. Jason Thompson struck out. Now it's Dave Parker with two outs. Good play by Junior Ortiz. About a 57 foot fastball. Junior held on to it, kept Johnny Ray at second. Tom Seaver, lifetime record of 24 and 12 against the Pirates. On the outside corner, Dave Parker is called out on strikes. Bob Engel warning Dave Parker, but the inning is over. No runs. A man left for the Pirates will go to the Mets fourth. Foster, Bradley, and Giles coming up 1-1 here at Shea Stadium. Well, the conversation between home plate umpire Bob Engel and manager Chuck Tanner is because Chuck's going to have to make a lineup change. Dave Parker, who did not agree with that called third strike, Continued his conversation as he made his way to the outfield, and Bob Engel has kicked him out of the ball game. I don't understand. You know what Dave did? First of all, he has to be a little frustrated because the the call third strike. But he turned around as he was walking to the outfield and threw his batting glove back in toward the pirate dugout, and that's when Engel winged him. Uh, I can't say that I agree with that. Now I know Dave is frustrated but to kick a player out of the game for throwing his batting glove back in toward the dugout. I think Engel feels that he was showed up a little bit. And there you see Parker. This is the replay of what happened. But Dave is just getting his uh, money's worth. But there's there you see the batting glove. Al Monchek has it in his hand right there and that's what he's showing Engel. Now throwing equipment you can be ejected or fine but that's a batting glove that Parker doesn't take to the outfield. Well that'll cost him and he's thrown out of the game. And Lee Lacey will be in right field to replace Dave Parker. Who has been kicked out of the ball game and heads back into the pirate locker room. So Lacey is in right field put him in Parker's spot in the order leading off for the Mets fourth inning is George Foster. First pitch is a ball and we'll pause five seconds for station identification on the pirate television network. KDK TV 2 Pittsburgh. back over our heads and out of play foster a single in the first inning the Mets had three consecutive hits in the first had runners at second and third with one out after they had scored their run but John Candelaria came back to get a couple of strikeouts and got out of the inning since then candy has been tough he's retired eight in a row way outside one and two Oh, a little excitement for the folks in Shea Stadium as Parker is ejected from the contest. Foster, who always takes a lot of time at home plate, waits. You heard Lanny a while ago mentioning the outstanding record that Candy has in this ballpark and how he likes to pitch here. His record is 8 and 2 in Shea Stadium. He hasn't lost a game here since 1980. One win over the Mets this year came in Pittsburgh. He 
This is outside to George Foster. The count evens out at two balls and two strikes. Now it's full of three and two. You know, you and I have talked before, Jim, about umpires and the way they are today and how arguing is really not part of baseball anymore. That they don't have the big rhubarbs because you say a couple words and you're gone in a hurry. Well, I think a few years ago they got a little more authority and they sum up sometimes they try to use it too much taking some of the fun out of the game still three and two you know you watch candy pitch here to George Foster we mentioned last night how Larry McWilliams will get ahead in the count and try to go inside with a fastball candy does the opposite they're both left handed pitchers but John would rather get ahead in the count and then try to catch him with that tailing fastball or else get the curve on the outside strike three George Foster is down. Candy now with six strikeouts through the first three and a third innings. And a big breaking ball. It was out of the strike zone, and Foster changed it, chased it. The batter now will be Mark Bradley. He struck out his first time up. Top of the sixth in Montreal. The Expos now leading the Cardinals six to one. Swing and a miss. Boy, I tell you, he's throwing hard tonight. It really is. This is the kind of night that's nice and warm. You get loose in a hurry, and well, John looks free and easy out there. One ball and one strike to Bradley, who was penciled in late for Dave Kingman when Kingman came down with an upset stomach. Of course, you always, you often wonder sometimes if the upset stomach is the guy on the mound. You know, <laughs> you've heard that before. Could be. In this case, you would call it, I guess, Candelaria itis. Right. Philadelphia leads Chicago one nothing in the top of the fifth tonight. You know that that uh, St. Louis Montreal game Bryn Smith started for Montreal. He's a relief pitcher but he's been pressed into a starting role because of the double headers and he's doing a heck of a number on the Cardinals. It's kind of a staff saver situation there where they need somebody to come out and give them a solid six seven innings and he's going to do it tonight. They're in the top of the sixth in that game. We're in the bottom of the fourth here. There's a one hopper to Johnny Ray. Bradley is out number two. Candelaria now has set down 10 Mets in a row. There's Johnny Ray. He made a heck of a play last night on a ball that came up and they turned it into a double play. This infield here, you know, John, they've changed the dirt surface here. The dirt that they use now is what they have in Chicago, that black or dark brown dirt. And it's a different kind of a texture. The rest of the, the warning track and other areas, it looks like that red cinder kind of dirt. There you see the difference right there around home plate and back behind home plate there in the the track area two different shades and the infielders well I think they'd rather have this new stuff because it's a little softer but it also creates some bad hops once in a while two balls and no strikes on Brian Giles who struck out in the first inning. Candelaria's record against Eastern Division teams seven and zero oh this year. Called strike. He's beaten everybody in the East at least once, and the Cubs and the Expos twice. So you go back over the last couple of years, and John is eleven and five against Eastern Division teams. And that's who the Pirates will be playing now for the next few weeks. Swing and a miss. Count evens out at two balls and two strikes. After this series, this is the second of five here in Shea Stadium. Back home, Philadelphia, Montreal coming into Pittsburgh, and then we'll turn it around and go to Philadelphia and Montreal. So it's going to be fun. Right center field, Marvell went on the move, runs it down, showing his speed again. A one, two, three inning, the Mets are gone. Marvell tracks it down. We have played four here in Shea Stadium. As he makes the play on this one, Mike Eastler, Tony Pena, and Dale Barrow will be getting ready to come to bat. One, one after four in New York. Thank you. Well, we've had one winner tonight. We'll try to do it again with another Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes inning. If a pirate hits a home run here in the top half of inning number five, Olive Savar of Bethel Park 
will pick up $100 worth of Giant Eagle groceries, plus those certificates for 24 12-ounce cans of Pepsi Free. Olive Savar. Bethel Park is our contestant. We had a winner earlier tonight, an $800 winner cashed in when Mike Eastler, who leads it off here, hit a home run. That's the only run of the game and the only hit of the game for the Pirates. The Mets have three hits. They all came in the first inning. I guess, Rook, when you have Seaver Candelaria matchup, you expect this kind of a contest. Well, yes, you do. Uh, although Seaver pitching just a tad a, a better than John in terms of the hits, the runs are what count. And Seaver has been, he's been very sharp, not so much with what he's throwing, but where he's throwing it. He's putting them on the corners for the most part. Well, Mike Eastler batting over 350 in his last wow. 44 games. He threw that one into uh, almost all the way to LaGuardia. Would you call that a waste pitch? Look at it again. Looked like a changeup. Now watch that. Just before he threw the ball, looked like he put his fingers up. And what he tries to do there, keep the fingertips off the ball so you can't get very much on it. He's pushing the ball now, John. Years ago, Tom Seaver, of course, the overpowering pitcher, plus the fact he didn't throw anything above the knees. Now he can't quite get it in the same area. Missed again. Three and one to Mike Eastler. Seaver has three strikeouts. To right down the pipe. Mike taking all the way. Now, <laughs> I can't figure that out. It's three balls and a strike. What would you be looking for right there? Seaver threw it right down the middle. And here's the guy that hit a home run his last time up. There, right, is a tendency to look for too much instead of being basic. Drives it up the middle base hit. So Mike Eastler gets his second hit of the ball game, and it is the second hit for the Pirates. The hit man doing it all right now for the Bucks. Now, when you when you get a hit off a pitcher the first time, you, in the back of your mind, you go up there and you say, "Well, he's not going to throw me that pitch again." And he didn't because Easter hit a pretty good pitch, a, a fastball that was down and tried to tail it away, and he hit it out of the ballpark. But then you have the tendency, I think, John, to go up there and look for too much. But Seaver won't change that much. He'll just maybe go to another area more so than another pitch because he does not throw that hard anymore. Oh! Down goes Tony Pena. Look at this. Look at Tony. He got back up in the box before the catcher got the ball back to Seaver. Look out. Of course, that's where Tom threw a couple of pitches to Mike Eastler. Only Mike batting from the left side, of course. They didn't go past his helmet like they did Tony Pena. Yeah, look at the look in Tony's eyes. And you can't intimidate Pena, believe me. Not that Seaver's trying. Slow roller over the head of Seaver. It'll be a tough play. The shortstop has only one. He goes to first. On the play, Mike Eastler moves up to second. Six to three on the put out of Pena and another runner in scoring position for the Pirates. Anytime you get knocked down, you're going to get up and try harder. Seaver threw a pretty good pitch and Okendo comes on. He's a good one. He makes that play look easy and it was for him. As good as he is. There's another look at him. Jose Okendo. Heck of a ball player. Now Junior Ortiz going to go out and talk to Seaver or maybe ask him some questions because Seaver Hey, he won 270 games in the major leagues. What is Ortiz going to tell him? I think he's going to ask him, how do you want to pitch to this guy right here with Candelaria coming up? They are grounded out his first time up. You know, we mentioned Dave Parker, who's been kicked out of this game already, batting 390 since the All-Star break. Dale Barra, batting 321 since the All-Star break. He's been part of the Pirate surge. Looking for too much. That ball was right down the middle. See, the fact that Ortiz went to the mound, it gets Dale thinking. What are they going to do to me? A roller to short. Okendo with a long throw, and it's a good one right on the button. Well, you talk about a kid setting himself up. He waited for the ball to come to him. He knew he had time because Okendo has a gun, and he anchored his back foot, got the ball, and rifled it onto Hernandez. So now John Candelaria will try to help himself out take a two out base hit to get Mike Eastler home and break this one one tie in the top of the fifth inning. I wonder Jim if sometimes you know last night the Pirates went up just free swinging against Craig Swan in the first couple of innings. Now they know it's Tom Seaver tonight. Does that mentally make any kind of difference. Uh, well again I think they they go by the past. And that'll kick foul they go they go by what the Tom Seaver used to be now. 
he didn't win 270 games on raw ability. He did it with mentally knowing what to do with his stuff. And what he's doing now, he's lost that stuff. What he does is use his mental abilities as far as how do I use what I have now? And again, the pitchers uh, have that to their advantage, and the hitters, again, have the tendency to look for too much. Way outside to Candy. It's two balls and one strike. John struck out in the third inning. We're now in the fifth. In each of the last two innings, the Pirates have gotten a runner to second with one out. Weren't able to score in the fourth. It's up to Candelaria here in the fifth. <laughs> Did you hear him? Yeah. I heard him from up here. He knew he had a pitch to hit. Candy swung and fouled it up. Look at that's he what you know. He, he just said that was it. That was the pitch I should have hit. A high fastball, and I almost said it before the pitch that the reason too, Craig Swan last night made a lot of mistakes. Seaver isn't doing that tonight, but he just made one to Candy and got away with it. Candy hits it to the right side. Hernandez cuts it off, spins, throws to Seaver. The inning is over. No home run in our Giant Eagle sweepstakes. For Olive Savar of Bethel Park, we have certificates for 24 12 ounce cans of Pepsi Free, certificates redeemable at your grocer, and when we play again, the jackpot will be up to $200. In the Mets fifth, it'll be the bottom third of the order, 1 1 in Shea Stadium. Patty Burns and Ray Tannehill tonight at 11. Hitting set for the bottom half of. Inning number five in Shea Stadium. Well, John's still out there getting his warm-up tosses, and when we have a moment or two, I want to send along a special hello. They're having a big bash over to at the Grand Concourse for Colonel Betta and his wife Pam on his new assignment in Hawaii. The Colonel has been in Pittsburgh for the past 36 months, and when he was there, the Marines met their mission. So again, best wishes to Colonel Betta, and remember, buddy, sent for five. In Hawaii. You bet. Okay, thanks, Rick. Okendo, fly to left his first time up. Candelaria now has retired 11 in a row. Pirates have two hits, both by Mike Eastler. The Mets have three hits. They all came in the first inning. Way outside from the candy man. Alan Steinberg, by the way, formerly of New Kensington, is now a corporate lawyer in the New York area. He's here tonight with his wife Gladys and son Neil. They want to send along happy birthday wishes to Harriet Steinberg back in New Kensington. So we have done that. Well, you got a good shot of Okendo talking to himself there just before the pitch. What he's he's telling himself, okay, see the ball, relax, hit the ball. Whatever he's saying, it's it's his way of relaxing up there. Moves him back, two and one. You know, each hitter, we've talked about it before, has a way of getting himself in motion. And in his case, maybe the talking helps get talking. himself in motion. Center field. Marvell win. Makes the play. Marvell has covered a lot of real estate in center field in the first two games of this series. Well, you know, in the last inning last night, talking to Rick Roden, this is a pitcher's ballpark, Rick Fields, because there's a lot of room out there. Now watch Marvell. He got back, and I think he might have misjudged that ball a little bit. Watch this. At the last moment, he has to kind of reach up there. And back over his head but he can cover a lot of ground he made a great play last night he's already made a good one tonight junior Ortiz fouls it back junior is 0 for 1 tonight one for four in the series oh look what he's doing did you see that George Brett pine tar you see what he just did don't make an out I can talk about it what he did he's got pine tar on his bat so he's getting it on his hands and then he walked his hands right up toward the very end of his bat and what he's doing is putting the pine tar from one area to the other and that's illegal according to what uh, the rule says. I caught him but nobody else did. <laughs> well and in that case what should they do. Well they're supposed to throw the bat out. Well <laughs> that that's a little nitpicking but this shows you how smart hitters can be at times that what happens is the pine tar will get up on the end of the bat and that'll put a little more bite on the ball. Give you a little bit of an advantage. Inside two and two. See if he does it again. Well. Nope. You see him peek right there. He's trying to peek. Look at him. Do you see his eyes? Yep. He hits it into center field. Shallow center field. Marvell wind drifting in. Makes the catch. Two outs. 
The last three batters have hit the ball to Marvell Wynn. Well, Brian Giles, the final out in the fourth inning, Wynn had to go get it, and he did. That was a fine play that he made in this game. And here's Tom Terrific. Talking to some Mets fans. They were a little, uh, I'm not exactly what terms to use, but they were not singing the praises of Marvell Wynn. They said, wait, you see what he hits for the year. I said, <laughs> I said, well, I've seen him play center field. He said, well, I was, this guy tried to tell me he was out of position last night. And that's out why of position? <laughs> You gotta I be just, kidding me. I just laughed and went on. You wouldn't you wouldn't care to say who it was. Well, it was somebody down at the press box, yeah. Obviously somebody that doesn't know anything about baseball. Out of position. What's the matter with that? Even if he was out of position, he made the catch a heck of a catch. Now, if he was out of position and the guy hit the ball right to him, they say he's not a good outfielder. Huh. There's a high hard one. That one was for Tony back in Pittsburgh, by the huh. way. One and two to Tom Seaver. Tom has seven hits, including two triples. One hopper to Dale Barra. On to Jason Thompson. One, two, three, once again. The Mets go quietly. We'll go to the sixth. Top of the order is coming up for the Pirates. One, one here in New York. Hi, this is Pirate batting coach Bob Skinner and pitching coach Harvey Haddix. Here to remind you about Budweiser's Old Timers Day coming up at Three Rivers on Sunday afternoon, August 21st. Mazeroski, Blass, Burgess, Face, Stargill, Friend, Rooker, and of course Skinner and Haddix are just a few of the many former Pirate players that will be on hand before the current Pirates play the Cincinnati Reds at 135. That's Sunday, August 21st, Budweiser's Old Timers Day. We have played five here in Shea Stadium along with Jim Rucker and Lanny Frateri. This is John Sanders. Delighted to have you with us tonight. Checking Olympic Stadium. Montreal leading St. Louis six to one on the top of the seventh now. Chicago and Philadelphia tied one one. That game's in the sixth inning. Houston leading Cincinnati one nothing in the top of the third. San Diego one nothing over Philadelphia. That game's also in the third. Marvell Wynn takes a strike from Tom Seaver and we want to send along our best wishes to Bill Greer, who is in St. Francis Hospital, Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Hope he's doing all right tonight. Tomorrow afternoon, 4 o'clock is the start time. And for the network stations, we remind you to check your local listings. Find out if they'll be part of the telecast for the weekend. We have several network stations, and they carry a different number of games. So not all the network stations are on for every game. So you want to be sure to check your listings. But it's four o'clock. Game time on Sunday is one o'clock. We'll have inside Pirate Baseball starting at 1230. Wind takes up high. Marvell tonight is 0 for 2. Fly to left. And bounced out to Keith Hernandez at first. Two balls and two strikes now. You know, John, when I went away there, of course, I stepped out a couple minutes here. I kept thinking about what, what you said, out of position. If he's out of position, Marvell is new in the league, and the, and the Pirate coaches position the outfielders anyway, so he wasn't playing out of position. He was told to play where he was, but even then so, the ball that was hit was Danny Heap, a left-handed batter, and you play him where Marvell was in right center field, so. Right, especially with Kent DeColvey on the mound. Exactly. Well, I think what, what the problem is, they know now that the Pirates made a heck of a trade getting Marvell win for Junior Ortiz. Left center field, well hit. Foster back and has room. One out. Marvell going the other way. Flies out for the second time to George Foster. That will bring up Johnny Ray. Johnny is 0 for 1 tonight. He flied to center and also walked. Seaver and Candelaria hooked up in a 1-1 duel here in Shea Stadium tonight. The Bucks trying to stretch their current winning streak to four in a row. There's that change up. I don't believe he's gotten it over yet, has he? Nope. Look at that. He's saying he was it up. <laughs> That's playing the game with the umpire right there. Comes back with a fastball and misses inside 2-0. The Pirates, by the way, by winning last night, and we'll look at that change up again. 
Now watch it. Look at Johnny Ray was way out in front. He had his weight on his front foot. And the reason Tom said is it up the any time a pitcher asks you is it up it's because he doesn't think it was up if anything it had to be high or or if anything it had to be inside or outside. Tries to get the umpire to think the other way. Started to say that the Pirates by winning last night stretched their road winning streak now to eight in a row. That's tops in the majors this year. Eight wins in a row on the road. It's not too bad. The Mets, by the way, have only won 14 games on the road the whole season. The Pirates' road record is 27 and 23, second only to that of the Dodgers. And they are 25 and 24 at home, 52 and 47, half game in front in the East. Johnny Ray hits it to center field. Mookie Wilson. Right there, two outs. I think uh, about the time of the year it started warming up, John, and we were on the road, and that's when they started playing better. And then all of a sudden it carried over back at home. It certainly did. Here's Bill Madlock, 0 for 2 tonight. And he still has that pad on his bat. There you get a good look at it. His right hand bothering him a little bit. Batting average is at 332 right now. Bill in pursuit of another batting championship drives it down the line that'll go for extra bases Foster tracks it down in the corner Madlock on his way to second and Bill will go in standing up with a double so Bill stretches his hitting streak to seven games in a row and he's in scoring position with two outs well it's only the third hit that Seaver has given up and a not a bad pitch but Bill Madlock with a quick bat got his hands in and pulled it down in the corner. Now Foster look at him he's thinking of going to second but there's really no reason to because Bill's in easily and the Pirates have the go ahead run on. It's the third straight inning that the Pirates have had a man at second. Twice previously not able to cash it in. And Jason Thompson in the fourth inning struck out with a man at second and one out. Let's see what he does with two outs. Thompson swings through it and misses. Seaver will put every bit of knowledge to use right here because the kind of a game the way it's going. 1 1 at the moment. He knows that this could be the batter that could beat him right here, John. So he has to really use all of his knowledge to get him out. Thompson swinging a miss strike, too. Two good pitches from Seaver. Exactly. The first one, a fastball away. The last one, a slider inside. Now you're Jason Thompson. Your mind is going a little bit. What is he going to throw me and where? Quite a battle right here. It doesn't seem like much, but it really is. Two out double by Madlock. Thompson drives it to left field. Foster there. Side retired. A hit, a man left, and the Pirates sixth, and the Mets sixth, the top of the order will be coming up. Wilson, Brooks, and Hernandez. It's still 1 1 in Shea Stadium. You know, Atari and the Pirates are a lot alike. They both supply the fans here at Three Rivers with plenty of fireworks. The Pirates supply them on the field, and Atari supplies them off the field. And when you put them together, it makes for a great night. Well, that's what we have planned on Saturday, August 20th. We'll be playing the Cincinnati Reds at 7.05, and immediately following the game, all fans will be treated to the first Sky concert ever at Three Rivers. It'll be a night to remember. Saturday, August 20th, call 323-1150 for tickets. Okay. Bottom half of inning number six in Shea Stadium, 1-1. One, one. one run, three hits, and one error for Pittsburgh. One run, three hits, and no errors for the Mets. Our program is authorized under program rights granted by the Pittsburgh Pirates Baseball Club Incorporated. It's intended solely for the entertainment of our audience and any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the expressed written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates is prohibited. Down the right field line, foul and out of play. Mookie Wilson is 0 for 2. Struck out and grounded out. Candelaria has retired 14 in a row. Six of them on strikeouts. One pitch. Line to Madlock. He makes the play. Bill Madlock takes a base hit away from Mookie Wilson. Wow. You know what? Bill was playing in, John, because Wilson always 
has the chance to bunt, but watch this, just a reaction play. Now he's right on the edge of the grass. What a play by Madlock. There you get another good look at it. Half a step, right there. That's why they call it the hot corner, folks. It's hot down there at times. And his little gloves there look like <laughs> tails, huh? Hello. So Madlock records the out, and here is Hubie Brooks. Hubie had a double and scored the Mets run in the first inning. Batting 282. Called strike to him. Down the right field line. This will be out of play. I think, it's, two strikes. I think it's interesting when people talk about Bill Madlock that they always talk about his hitting but not his fielding and he's such an underrated third baseman. He's made some outstanding plays the other day when Jose De Leon the other night against uh, the Padres De Leon had a no hitter going and Madlock made a an unbelievable play off the Juan Bonilla hit a wicked hop and Bill had to go to his right backhand the ball he actually spun around backwards making the play. He's made some dynamite plays at third base. Again, I think he's one of the best down there. Missed the outside corner. One you know, and two. John, if, you, if you're not fancy and flashy and all this stuff, you don't get that maybe the the uh, the ink or people just don't look at you as a great third baseman. But Dog is. He's a heck of a third baseman. That's foul outside of third. So close and yet so far away as far as the fans down there are concerned. Come on, honey, give him the ball. She said, I can't. In Three Rivers, they do. One, two pitch. Again, he fouls it away. You know, that's a good angle right there, Hubie Brooks. Again, we mentioned it last night, how he straightens out that left arm, and it's so very stiff. Most hitters, they'll have their arms bent a little bit, but he gets his bat all the way back, and his first move is, well, Gets his bat going forward. 2-2 two, two now. John Candelaria back home in New York where he was an outstanding high school basketball player. Heavily recruited. He's 6-7. Great rebounder. Center field. Marvell Wynn puts it away. 16 in a row. Retired by Candelaria. And four of the last six putouts have been made by Marvell Wynn in center field. Here's Keith Hernandez. You know, every hit that they have has been the other way. Hubie Brooks, the right handed batter, in the right field corner. Hernandez going the other way with the base hit to get the first run in, and that'll go foul. And then George Foster with the base hit to right center. So they're not getting around on Candy. That tells you that he has the, the good stuff tonight. No balls, one strike to Keith Hernandez. It was Keith with a base hit to the opposite field in the first inning to drive in the Mets run. Took a little something off. Hernandez laid off. It's one and one. Scoreboard shows St. Louis and Montreal seventh inning. The Expos leading six to one. Seventh inning in Philadelphia. Chicago has now taken a two to one lead over the Philadelphia Phillies. Missed again. Two balls and one strike. This is the time of season now, Jim, where it really starts to be fun because we have to watch the other teams, find out what they're doing, and we get set to go head to head against Montreal and Philadelphia in the next couple of weeks. Well, it's the dog days. This is the fun part of the year. Hernandez, a ground ball to second. Johnny Ray deep at second. Throws him out. One, two, three, once again. For the fifth straight inning, the Mets go up and down in order. We'll go to the Pirates' seventh. Lee Lacey will lead it off. Then Mike Eastler and Tony Pena. The Candyman and Tom Seaver hooked up in a 1-1 battle in New York. The next three innings are sponsored in part by Nissan and your greater Pittsburgh area Datsun dealer. They're driven to save you money. Buy Gulf Oil and Gulf Super Unleaded. If your car knocks and things, don't get mad. Get Gulf Super Unleaded, the gas with guts. And by your local McDonald's restaurants. It just takes two, McDonald's and you. Lee Lacey batting for the first time in the ballgame. He came on when Dave Parker was thrown out. 
after being called out on strikes to end the fourth inning. So Lacey batting for the very first time. His batting average is 315. Lee fouls it away. Lacey batting 231 against the Mets this year and just about the same number lifetime. But in the last 17 games, Lee is batting over 400. As a matter of fact, 451. Called strike two. We talk about the Pirates' surge. You have to go back to June and cover the last 40 games. The Pirates are winning 29 of their last 40. And over that span, averaging almost five runs a game, batting 293 as a team. Lacey lines it down the right field line foul. Oh. And also banging out 48 home runs in the last 40 games. So it's really been a turnaround. And I think, too, Jim, the pitchers have kept pace. And the Pirate bullpen has been very, very effective in this recent surge. Well, they're getting it together. Interesting note about the home runs. I'll get to that. Lacey ground ball. Cut off by Hernandez to Seaver. In time, there's a gold glove play at first by Hernandez. Well, last night, Keith Hernandez with a couple of errors. You don't see that too often, but this is something you do see occasionally. This kind of a play. Now watch him. Kind of reminds you of Bill Buckner. Look at that. That has base hit on it all the way, but Hernandez says, I'll take it. And Seaver doing his job covering over there. You know, a lot of times, John, your pitchers on a ball like that figure, what the heck, it's going to go into right field, and you get a late break. But Seaver, off the mound right away, if he hesitates at all, Lacey beats it out. Lee has good speed, but in that case, Seaver doing exactly what he had to do. And you mentioned the home runs. Going into this game, the Pirates had only one home run against the Mets. Of course, Eastler with his home run in the second inning, but Lee Mazzilli had a home run earlier in the year against New York. and. Well, putting things together, the Bucks, Bucks hitting the long ball as of late, but at the beginning of the season, well, not any hitting at all, especially the home run punch. So only the one home run. Swing and a miss. Well, it looks like Seaver is going to his fastball a little bit more. Didn't use it early in the game, saving it to the part of the game where he might need it. We can reach back and go get it, and he just threw a good one to Eastler. Lays off that pitch. One and two. One one ball game. Each team with three hits. The Pirates have committed the game's only error. We're in the top of the seventh inning. Mike is down on strikes. That's four strikeouts for Tom Seaver. Now there's a master right there at work. Let's watch the pitch. Keeps it down and look at a tail away. That's almost the same pitch that Eastler hit out of the ballpark in the second inning. But Tom got it a little bit lower and a little bit more outside. The difference of just inches. He'll get back up on top of the mound as Tony Pena comes up. Tony is 0 for 2, grounded to second and grounded to short. And you remember the last time up, Seaver with a high inside pitch to Tony. Pena bounced out, but let's see what happens this time. Batters don't forget those things. Tony batting 287. He has four homers and 33 runs batted in. And I'll guarantee you this Tony looking for the high hard one. He'd like to ram it out of here. Pena drives it to right field. That's going deep. Could get into the pirate bullpen <laughs> and does. Tony Pena goes the other way for a home run. It is his fifth of the year. Pena hits it out, and the Pirates take a two-to-one lead, both on home runs. Tony will touch them all. The Bucks are out on top, and Mr. Rooker called it. What was it? It was a high, hard one, and Pena did ram it out of here. Ramadama. He hit it the other way. I'll tell you what, it's 358 over the right field. Well, look at that pitch. Up and out. Look at Seaver. He knew it when he threw it because he threw his glove up. His head went down, and there you see Mark Bradley saying goodbye. See you later. Vera pops it up into short right field. Bradley drifting to his right to make the catch and retire the side. But Tony Pena's home run has given the Pirates a lead here in the seventh inning and in the Mets half of the seventh. Foster, Bradley, and Giles coming up. Seaver and the Mets now trail by one. It's the Bucks two, the Mets one. 
Thanks to the home run by Tony Pena, the Pirates now lead it two to one as George Foster leads off the bottom half of the seventh inning. John Candelaria has been perfect since the first inning. With one out, Hubie Brooks doubled. Keith Hernandez singled to drive him in. Then George Foster, who's at the plate now, got a base hit. Foster is the last Met to reach base as we go to the seventh inning. Candelaria has set down 17 New York batters in a row. Foster batting 253. Pops it up. Short right field. Lacey coming in. Lee will make the catch for out number one. You know, it could have been a catalyst way back in that first inning because Candy giving up a run on three hits. He's got runners at second and third and only one out. He needed the strikeout or pop up, stop the Mets from getting something going and maybe breaking the game open. So he strikes this guy out right here to start things, John, and gets Giles to end the inning. And that just kept him going right up to this point. He has struck out six thus far, allowed three hits. The Pirates now have four hits in the ball game. One by Madlock, a home run by Pena, and two hits by Mike Eastler tonight. Fouled back under our contractual arrangements. The announcers for this telecast have been selected by station KDKA-TV, subject to the approval of the Pittsburgh Pirates Baseball Club Incorporated. And we want to welcome our network stations. KDKA, flagship station in Pittsburgh, as Cecilio Guante gets up. WJAC TV in Johnstown Altoona and WBAH in Charleston Huntington West Virginia delighted to have you with us tonight Bradley's 0 for 2 you know he looked over at Bill Madlock after he threw that last pitch and fouled it away and you know that John the first three pitches here has thrown fastballs and I'm just wondering if that's the book on Bradley I'm not quite sure Madlock's guarding the line by the way Fastball away and got him. I'm wondering if John doesn't feel that he can get his curveball over right now when fastball's all the way. And well, I think we set it up earlier the fact that Candy likes to go away with his fastball when he's ahead of the hitter instead of coming in like McWilliams does. And he did it there and got the strikeout. Brian Giles 0 for 2, struck out and line to center. One of the three fine defensive plays we've had in the game was made against Giles. And was Marvell win. Now they're playing Giles to right center. Marvell has really swung around to right. Big gap in left center. And the reason, I guess, Candy's throwing so hard that they recognize that fact down in the bench and on the field level. So if he's not going to pull it, you pitch him away and you play him away. Candelaria is still having a running conversation with Madlock. Fouled it back. I don't know whether he's telling him an extended joke that takes several pitches to get across. And there's Dave Kingman watching. Well, you know, Bill is guarding the line, and I've, I'm going to try and find out later on. Now, I'm going to go down in the ninth inning, and maybe we can find out what it is that they're talking about. Two outs, nobody on. In fact, I think what I'll do, John, is go down right at the beginning of the inning when the Pirates are hitting, maybe get a hold of Madlock or Candelaria, and then I can relay it back up to you because I'm, I'm curious. Two one pitch. There's a base hit to right field. First hit for the Mets since the first inning. Candelaria's string of consecutive outs ends at 19. And let's watch the pitch. A fastball and give credit to, to Giles because he went out and got it. Now here's the guy that couldn't start the game because of a stomach virus, and all of a sudden. He's going to pinch hit. I don't think I'll ever be able to figure this out. If a batter's not good enough, a player can't play at the beginning of the game, I just don't see how he can come on and pinch hit in a situation when the game is on the line. It is Dave Kingman you're speaking of. Candelaria and Pena will talk it over as Kingman gets ready. Dave, as a pinch hitter, is six for 20 with one homer and three RBIs this year. Batting 210 on the full season. And that brings Chuck Tanner out of the Pirate dugout. Guante had been throwing earlier. Now, you remember last night, McWilliams said that he got a little bit tired and it was difficult for him to breathe because of the heat and the humidity here in New York. Now, Candy has given it a heck of a job so far into the bottom of the seventh inning. So Chuck will go out and ask him, first of all, how do you feel? Are you okay? Now, you saw John na nod. And the candy man, it looks like, doesn't agree with what Chuck just did. He's going to bring in Cecilio Guante. And Candy, 
I don't think it's too happy about this move. Now, Pena had gone out there earlier, and I think what they were going to do, John, was discuss how to pitch to Dave Kingman. So Kingman facing the right-hander now, Guante, I don't think he'd feel too comfortable batting off of Cecilio. And Kingman, with the knowledge of what Candelaria throws, has the opportunity to maybe look more for a pitch that he can hit, but he'll have to guess with Guante. So Cecilio will come on. Candelaria is through for the night. John gets credit for working six and two-thirds innings. Gave up four hits and at one stretch retired 19 Mets in a row, striking out seven, did not walk a man tonight. Allowed one run, and the man at first is his responsibility in Brian Giles. And while Cecilio Guante makes his way to home plate, we're going to pause for a message brought to you as a public service by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Life-saving training is essential if you're ever called upon to save a life. What you're seeing is a CPR demonstration, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. The Pirates and American Red Cross will have training sessions here at Three River Stadium on Saturday, August 20th. Everyone who registers and takes the training will be our guest that night when we meet the powerful Cincinnati Reds. So play it safe. Learn the life-saving skills of CPR. To register and get more information, call the Red Cross at 263-3100. Cecilio Guante is the new pirate pitcher. Let's check his numbers, Rook. Okay, John. Guante comes on for the 18th time this year. He's 2-0 with three saves, an earned run average of 2.68. And I touched on it a little bit earlier about Kingman pinch hitting. And you might wonder, would Frank Howard go to the left-handed part of his bench because Chuck Tanner brings in the right-hander because you have Danny Heap, Ron Hodges, Rusty Staub, and Daryl Strawberry. But it looks like Kingman is going to go ahead and bat. Guante, who slings the ball a little bit, throws very hard. Excuse me, throws very hard. He has that sweeping curveball breaking pitch. And for Dave Kingman, who looks for the ball from the middle of the plate in, he tries to pull everything and he tries to hit it out of the park. It won't be that easy to hit off Guante. Well, thinking about those left-handed batters that are still on the bench, as far as the Mets are concerned, manager Chuck Tanner has Lefty righty combination going in the bullpen. So that would be Rod Scurry. And also Kent DeColby loosening up out there. You know, I'm not so sure that, that Frank Howard, uh, you know, might not have used Dave Kingman for a decoy. Now it looks like Kingman is going to go ahead and bat, but if if I were to use a batter for a decoy, you might send up Ashford or Baylor instead of Dave Kingman. But uh, actually going against the percentages right here when you have a, an outstanding pinch hitter on the bench one of the best in the business in Rusty Staub and plus you Daryl Strawberry who can hit the ball out of the ballpark and this guy there you see Scurry and Teak Kingman is such a free swinger that you don't know uh, I think I would make a move here I'd pinch hit somebody else well we'll see how it works out as Guante comes on now they have the shift on all the infielders between second and third outside to Kingman. Now one thing Cecilio has to do in this situation too is throw strikes. You don't want to put the go ahead run on and especially push the tying run by walking Kingman. There you see Giles push the tying run to second base. Kingman at the plate with two outs runner at first. Again the pitch is outside to Dave Kingman. So now it's 2-0, and, oh, and Cecilio's creating a little bit of a problem for himself because he needs to throw a strike now. Well, the first two pitches, breaking balls. Kingman is a fastball hitter, and if you're going to guess, you can do that right now because Kingman, I would think, would be looking strictly fastball, and Cecilio thinking that he has to throw a fastball to get it over the plate. He's missed with two breaking pitches. for Jose Okendo. So we'll have to have a new shortstop. And in most situations, the new pitcher, whoever it is, would probably go in this spot in the order, which is the number seven spot. And whoever's going to play shortstop would go down in the number nine spot, I would imagine, depending upon what happens in this inning, of course. Fouled away. Kingman had the green light on 3-0. and I think you could just about guess that he did have. He's up there to hit the ball out of the park, and that's what he's going to try and do. Watch the pitch. And that's not a base hit swing. Pretty good pitch by Guante on 3 and 0. 
Breaking pitch, and oh, that one caught oh, Tony Pena. Oh. Down goes Tony. Here comes Tony Bartero. Steve Nikosha, remember, on the disabled list, so Gene Tennis is the backup catcher, and Tony is hurting. We've been beating ourselves up all night, you know what? Well, you know, as hard as Guante throws, and Kingman just barely got a piece of that, and we're not quite sure where it caught Pena. Let's watch it and see if we can pick it up here. Foul tip off the end of the bat, and it looked like it hit him right dead on the right knee, and that hurts, even though he has the shin guards, and, and they have, other than the well, kind of uh, fiberglass shin guards, they have padding behind that, but it caught him flush, and Pena goes down. Now, let's see a little smile there, and I think he is. Pena is, I'm telling you, one rough customer, and it takes a lot to get him out of a game, but it looks like he's okay, and it, that hurts, man, I'll tell you. But Tony appears to be all right. Add away, big guy. Get up and walk it off now. We'll get a round of applause from the fans at Shea Stadium. <laughs> Looking at the umpire, Bob Engel. And Bob Engel saying, better you than me. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. He said, I hope it doesn't hurt too bad, but I'm glad it was you instead of me. <laughs> That's what the catcher's there for, to protect the umpire. <laughs> There you see a good look at the shin guards. They're kind of a fiberglass material, and then they have a, a thin coating of padding behind him, and it still hurts when you catch it flush like that, and that's what happened to Tony. Three yeah. and two on Kingman in the meantime. Yep, and Giles will be running on this pitch, so looks for some action here. Payoff pitch. Popped it up. Short left field. Dale Barrett takes charge. Side retired, the Pirates get out of the seventh inning. We'll go to the eighth, the pitcher spot, with Cecilio Guante due up first, then Marvell Wynn and Johnny Ray. The Bucks hanging on by a run after seven here in Shea Stadium. Well, the eighth inning is another Giant Eagle home run sweepstakes inning, and from McDonald, Pennsylvania, Charles Pirong Sr. is our contestant. If a Pirate hits a home run here in the eighth, Charles will pick up $200 worth of Giant Eagle groceries plus certificates for 24 12 ounce cans of Pepsi Free. We didn't get to the pitcher spot in the order as far as the Mets are concerned, so Tom Seaver is still out on the mound. Pencil in Bob Baylor now is the number seven batter. Dave Kingman pinch hitting for Jose Okendo, so the new shortstop is Bob Baylor from Connellsville, and Tom Seaver is still out on the mound for the Mets. Leading off the eighth inning for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Number 47, the pitcher, Cecilio. So here's Cecilio Guante, who came on to pick up the last out of the seventh inning. And a big out it was. Kingman up there, he was going for the pump, but Guante got the ball in on his hands and got him to pop it up. Strike to Guante, who has two hits and 11 at bats this year. Pirate runs coming in the second and the seventh. Second inning home run by Mike Eastler and the seventh inning home run by Tony Pena. Two balls and one strike to Cecilio Guante. You can't really say enough good things about the job that Cecil, as he is called, has done. Yeah, he, he just goes out there and give him the baseball and he'll do the best he can. Speaking of jobs, Tom Seaver has made a couple of mistakes tonight. Well, I should say one to Tony right. Pena because Eastler hit a good pitch, but Seaver has pitched a heck of a game. Meanwhile, he's down two to one. Count goes full to three and two. Strange, Seaver trying to hit the corners on Guante. Look at that. And he walked him. Guante goes to first. We'll pause five seconds for station identification. This is the Pittsburgh Pirate Television Network. KDK TV2 Pittsburgh. So Tom Seaver has issued his second free pass to go with four strikeouts and four hits. Marvell Wynn will give Guante time to get his jacket on at first before he gets to home plate. Marvell is 0 for 3 tonight against Tom Seaver. Who's in the bullpen out there, Rook? I think it's Doug Sisk, but I was just going to say, I'm surprised this late in the ball game that Frank Howard didn't have somebody throwing in the bullpen. No, it's a left-hander. It's not Doug Sisk. I'll find out who it is in a second. Jesse Orozco. There he is. But uh, Seaver has to be a little tired. I don't think there's any doubt about it. 
and pitching to the corners with the pitcher and walking him. That's just creating problems. They look for the butt. They get it. Seaver will go to second. <laughs> Score at one to six. Not much question about this, Rook. Well, not a good bunt. Look at this. Seaver is off the mound alertly, and look at the ball. Bunted halfway to the mound, and it's an easy play. So, Marvell, if he bunts the ball, basically what he wanted to do is try and bunt it to first base because Hernandez had to hold the runaway, but doesn't make any difference. The play's over, and we didn't do it. So, Wynn and Guante trade places. Here's Johnny Ray, who's 0 for 2. This will be interesting. There's a quick throw to first. Now, Met catchers have only thrown out 26% of the base runners. That's why Seaver's paying so much attention to Marvell Wynn. And Ortiz, now the Mets aren't very happy with him. He has a strong arm, but his mechanics aren't that good. Marvell's not running. Johnny Ray takes a strike. The Pirates have stolen 81 bases this year, including two last night against Junior Ortiz. They've been thrown out 48 times on the year. The Mets running a little more, 87 stolen bases, and they've been caught stealing 42 times. It's a two to one ball game in the top of the eighth. The Pirates leading by one. Win is running outside. Let's see the throw. Not in time. Good throw would have had him, I think, Rook. Yep, the ball tailed to the first base side of second base. Now watch this, a good pitch to handle. Look at the throw. Baylor had to reach out for it, and by the time he brings the tag back, and Marvell is in. Now watch, watch Ortiz again. He comes out pretty good on that. Now, if the throw's on line, he's out, because look at that. It's there before the runner, but Baylor had to reach out for it. Now, this makes 183 attempts by the opposition against the Mets, and they've only thrown out 49, so that's, that's not good at all. Now, Johnny Ray with a chance to pick up some insurance for the Pirates, and also batting for Charles Pirong, a senior of McDonald in our Giant Eagle sweepstakes inning. Two so to one. Your catchers. Johnny pops it up. Yeah, we'll wait till Baylor puts this away. But what I was going to say, your catchers throwing out base runners is just like your defense making a good play because it saves runs. It saves the runners getting into scoring position. And if you don't throw them out, well, it just helps the other team along. So Seaver, knowing what's going on, he tried to keep Marvell as close to the bag and hope that he didn't get a good jump. But Ortiz didn't do his job. So now Bill Madlock will try to pick up that extra run with two outs. Bill is one for three tonight. Doubled his last time up against Tom Seaver. Drives it to the second baseman. A line drive out. The inning is over. Pirates leave a man as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Junior Ortiz will lead it off. Then Tom Seaver is due up, followed by Mookie Wilson. It's two to one. The Pirates lead. No home run in the top half of the eighth for the Pirates. So for Charles Pirong, senior of McDonald, we have certificates for 24 12 ounce cans of Pepsi Free. Certificates redeemable at your grocer. And when we play again tomorrow night, our jackpot will be up to $300. Totals are in on the St. Louis Montreal game. The Expos have won it 7 to 1 tonight. So Montreal beats St. Louis. The winning pitcher is Bryn Smith. He's 2 and 4. Allen, the loser, 7 and 9. Van Slyke hit a home run for St. Louis in the ninth. Andre Dawson hit a home run in the fourth, his 23rd of the year. They had 34,254 in Olympic Stadium. 7 to 2, Montreal winning over St. Louis. It's 2 to 1 here. Other scores Chicago leading Philadelphia 2 to 1 in the bottom of the eighth in Veterans Stadium tonight. Houston on top of Cincinnati 3 0. That game's in the top of the sixth. Bottom of the seventh in San Diego, it's the Padres one, Atlanta nothing, and Los Angeles and San Francisco have not begun yet. Danny Heap will be the pinch hitter for Junior Ortiz. So we'll see those left-handers now, Rook. Well, this is the time of the game where you, when you're behind, go to the bench, and Heap is a kind of a line drive hitter. This is the guy that Marvell made the fine catch on last night and saved the game. Heap batting 287. He has eight hits and 24 at bats, including three home runs as a pinch hitter. And there's Rusty Staub out on deck. He'll bat for Tom Seaver. 
Long run for Mike Eastler as it goes toward foul territory. The hitman gets there in time. Wee. Boy, a long way for him to go. You know what Mike did? As soon as the ball was hit, John, he had an idea where the ball was going in terms of location. He put his head down and ran as hard as he could. Rather than chase the ball and watch it, he put his head down, took off, and then was able to make the play. And here comes Rusty Staub. Well, credit Tom Seaver with working eight innings tonight. Gave up four hits, struck out four, walked two, two runs, both earned. They came off the home runs. Seaver's given up 16 home runs this year. Here is Rusty Staub, the National League's premier pinch hitter. 15 pinch hits and 14 pinch hit RBIs. He has really done a job. Strike one from Cecilio. Now there's a pitch right there. If Guante sticks with it, Staub can't hit it. Away and a good fastball. Rusty can't get around on that pitch. He might. Let's watch and see what happens. Now, if Staub hurts you right here, he he's trying to get the base hit. If you make a mistake, he'll hit it out of the ballpark. But keep the ball in the park, and pitching him away is the way to do it. That's what they're doing. Two balls and one strike. Rusty Staub batting 316. At eight consecutive pinch hit base hits. Then he made an out and got two more hits after that as a pinch hitter. Tied a record with those eight consecutive hits. Cardinals now are 52 and 49. The Expos 49 and 47. Look at that crouch at home plate. Ground ball to Dale Barra. Makes the play behind second. Can he throw him out? Yes. Good play by Dale. Now Staub does not run all that well. He knows he has time, so let's watch it here. Staub just trying to make contact. Barra got a good jump on the ball. Now he knows Staub is running. Look at this. Takes his time, throws on to Jason, and he gets him by a good two steps. There's another angle right there. Dale made a heck of a play there. That ball almost got into center field for a base hit. He just flips it over to Jason. And it was first hit, Rook. I didn't think it was hit that hard. I didn't think it had a chance of going to center field, but it almost got there. Yeah. Staub has that short stroke, and he chokes up and just meets the ball, and the ball jumps off his bat. Mookie will bat from the left side for the first time tonight. Fouls it away. He's 0 for 3. The Mets center fielder batting better from the left side than he is from the right side. Batting about 220 as a right-hander. Batting 267 left-handed. Swing and a miss. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's a hello swing. You see the pitch, you smile, you swing at it, and all of a sudden you don't hit it. And you say goodbye. One and two. We'll have a new catcher for the Mets in the eighth and a new pitcher. So a new battery. Danny Heap batted for Junior Ortiz and Rusty Staub pinch hitting for Tom Seaver. Mookie Wilson fouls it back. Now Mookie just cutting and slashing up there. He's trying to get a piece of the ball. Looks like he's almost running out of the box before he hits the ball. Two two. Well, whoever you are, hello. The Flushing Flyers. They're saying hello to Tony, too. Popped him up. Madlock. Fair territory. He's got it. Three up, three down in the eighth inning. We'll go to the ninth. The Pirates will send up the middle of the order. Thompson, Lacey, and Eastler leading by one. Top half of inning number nine. We have a new pitcher for the New York Mets and a new catcher. That is Ron Hodges. He'll be the new catcher. Put him in the number eight spot in the Mets batting order. And out on the mound is Jesse Orozco, the left-hander. Jesse, a record of 5-5, five and five, an earned run average of 1.55. He is on for the 41st time this year, and he is among the leaders in the National League in that category. He has nine saves in addition to his five wins and five losses. Picks up for Tom Seaver. Seaver leaves. He can't be the winner. Could be the loser for the 11th time this year. So Jason Thompson leads it off. Jason is 0 for 3. 3 for 7 now in the series. A 
American League scoreboard shows Chicago, New York now underway. The White Sox leading the Yankees two to one in the top of the fourth. Called strike to Jason. Toronto has defeated Cleveland four to two, so the Blue Jays beat the Indians tonight. Kansas City and Detroit still delayed by rain. Thompson ground ball on two hops to Hernandez keeps it in front of him and makes the play. So Keith Hernandez takes care of his opposing first baseman unassisted for the first out and this is the top of the ninth inning. Other scores in the American League Milwaukee ahead of Boston 11 to 1. That game in Fenway is in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Texas and Baltimore are tied 5 5 in the bottom of the seventh. Oakland and California yet to start. Lee Lacey batting for the second time came on when Dave Parker was kicked out in the fourth inning. And in the first two games of this series, Lacey is the only bench player, the only extra man to see action. Chuck Tanner did not pinch hit last night at all. And Lacey had to come on tonight when Parker was given the heave ho by home plate umpire Bob Engel. Jesse Orozco moves him back. Orozco did not pitch last night. The Mets used Holman, Gorman, and Diaz out of the bullpen. They were very effective against the Pirates after the Bucks had scored five runs in the first two innings. Tonight it was the Mets scoring a run with three base hits in the first. Mike Eastler answering that with a solo homer in the second. The only other run coming on Tony Pena's solo home run in the seventh inning. Two to one, each team with four hits. We're in the ninth inning. They appeal at first, and Jim Quick says no, he did not go around. Well, Lacey's still alive. We'll take a look. Tried to bring it back, and the umpires say he did. One out, nobody on. Lacey is gone that time. Orozco gets the strikeout. And Mike Easter will come to the plate. The hit man is two for three tonight. Hit that home run in the second. Had a base hit in the fifth inning and struck out in the seventh. Now facing Jesse Orozco. Welcome our network stations. KDKA TV in Pittsburgh. WJAC TV in Johnstown Altoona. And WVAH in Charleston, Huntington, West Virginia. Tomorrow's game on the network will start at 4 o'clock. Please check the listing in your area. See if your pirate network station is going to be part of the telecast tomorrow afternoon. And then on Sunday, our start time is 1 o'clock for the game. Inside Pirate Baseball getting underway at 12.30. Oh, 0-2 oh now to Mike Eastler looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth. Brooks, Hernandez, and Foster, the heart of the order, coming up for the Mets. As they take one more shot at the Bucks tonight. Pirates trying to win for the 30th time in the last 41 games. And for the 21st time in July. The Pirates are 20 and 8 in the month of July. Mike stays alive, gets a piece of it. Hodges and Orozco will have to track it down. You see Jim Rooker sneaking into the runway area as Jose De Leon. Out of curiosity, can you hear me, John? Yes, I can, Jim. Oh, okay, because I could barely hear you down here. That's why I wanted to make sure. But I had a chance to talk to John Candel. There we go. I had a chance to talk to John Candelaria about the seventh inning when Mark Bradley was batting and the conversation he was having with Mike Eastler and what Candy said. Watch this. Fly ball to short right center field. Coming in is Bradley. Make the play. The inning is over. Rook will pick it up when we come back okay. to the bottom of the ninth inning as the Pirates score in the order in the top of the ninth. Cecilio Guante will finish him off. Yumi Brooks, Keith Hernandez, and George Foster coming up. It's two to one. Bottom of the ninth coming up. Don't forget Pepsi Day at Kennywood Tuesday, August 16th. All rides, just one ticket. All right, now let's go back down to 
an area near the pirate dugout where Jim Rooker is hooked up and finish your conversation Rook on what transpired with Candelaria in the seventh inning. Well he was looking over his shoulder to Bill Madlock at third base and Mark Bradley was the batter and at that point with the Pirates leading two to one you try to guard the line to stop from the extra base hit. That's why Madlock was on the line and Candy looked over his right shoulder and told Madlock say hey he's not going to pull the ball he was going to pitch him away all the way not give him anything to pull in the chance of either the extra base hit or the home run. So that was the conversation. And again, you've cut out. I don't know if you can hear me or not, John. Jim, we hear you just fine. So stay down there and we'll get back to you as Hubie Brooks leads it off. Was Candelaria disappointed that he came out of the game? Uh, I didn't get a chance to ask him that. OK. Hubie Brooks is one for three tonight. He doubled and scored the Mets run in the first. This is the bottom of the ninth. It's a two to one ball game. Cecilio Guante trying to pick it up for John Candelaria. Candyman at one point retired 19 in a row and gave up just four hits in the ballgame. Pirates had just four hits themselves in the first nine tonight. Brooks ground ball to Dale Barrow. One hopper. Dale will gun him down. One away. I'll tell you what, John, from down here, that last pitch by Guante absolutely ate up Hubie Brooks. Got it in on his hands. He had no chance. And also, by the way, Candy was a little bit disappointed that he was taken out of a game, out of the game even more than disappointed. I think he wanted to stay in there, but I think that's what Chuck likes is his pitchers. They like to stay in there and try to finish what they have started. But let's look at it this way. Cecilio Guante has come on so far and did what he has to do. Here's Keith Hernandez. Keith drove in the run for the Mets in the first inning. By the way, the Pirates with four hits. This is game number 100 for the Bucks this year. And the last time they were held to as few as four hits was in the 39th game of the season when Craig McMurtry of Atlanta shut him out six nothing on a three hitter that was back on the 25th of May that tells you Jim what kind of a job Seaver did tonight on the mound that's true and in the pirate dugout right now it's it's very quiet because of this man right here but Marvell Wynn is there out number two you know when you sit down here in the dugout John people anticipate and you see you see fingernails uh, being bit. Richie Hebner biting his nails. Other players are down to their knuckles, I think, on some of them. But when you have a guy like Keith Hernandez coming up, he's the one guy that can tie at the left-handed batter against the right-hander Guante. Now, with Foster, they might feel a little more relaxed. But again, it, it's kind of tense down here in the dugout. Two to one ball game. It is a tense time here in Shea Stadium. Some of the fans heading for the exits. I guess they don't show a lot of confidence in George Foster, Rook. Well, the way Guante's been pitching, uh, I think that they might be right but who knows this guy can do it you can't make a mistake on him. He's George. up there for one thing to hit the ball out the park. And he had a double in the first inning. Guante to Foster. This is inside one ball and no strikes. Cecilio came on with two outs and a runner at first in the sixth inning. He got the pinch hitter Kingman. And he faced pinch hitter Heap, got him in the eighth inning. Pinch hitter Stop got him. Now working in the ninth, it's one and one. Well, if you want to look at how to pitch guys and what to do, you have Mark Bradley on deck. Now, he's not going to hurt you like Foster is, so you have to go at Foster, but still don't make a mistake. If he hits you, keep the ball in the ballpark. Off the end of the bat that time, foul. He's ahead in the count one and two. What do you look for him to try to do now, Rook? Well, he still has to make his kind of a pitch. He's ahead in the count, so he has the luxury of going away. I think you might look for the sidearm breaking ball, that big sweeping pitch. And he's got to keep it away from him, right? Exactly. And if you miss, miss off the plate. Don't miss out over the plate. Foster takes extra time. He's a slow worker at home plate, always has been. You talked about the smile. I did see George smile in the pregame drills. He was playing first base, taking some practice, and he was smiling at some of the Pirates. Exactly what you expected, Rook, but he missed away two and two. Well, he had the notion. You know, it's interesting. Down in the dugout here, Richie Hebner is yelling at Foster, get in the box, get in the box, because everybody, you know, you kind of get tired of those little games, and we talk about the way they try to speed up the game. Foster should I think they should make him get in there in the box more often or quicker than he does. He wastes more time than a lot of pitchers do. 2-2 two -two pitch and he steps out again. There you see you see there he's playing that game. He's trying to he's trying to break Guante's concentration. I would think it would break his own concentration at times. Well, he's used to it. Guante isn't. There Popped it is. him up. That should do it. Dale Barra makes the call. 
And the catch. The first place Pirates have done it again. Guante comes on to pick it up for the Candyman. Two to one, the final. We'll be back right after this. The Pirates have done it. They have defeated the New York Mets for the second straight time, stretching their winning streak to four in a row. Win number 21 for the month of July. John Candelaria gets credit for the win, and John Candelaria is our Pirate of the Game. Tonight is selected by our Pirate broadcast crew. The Candyman really did a great job. After giving up three hits in the first inning, he set down 19 batters in a row to gain the victory. So, John Candelaria, our Pirate of the Game, the Greater Pittsburgh Area Nissan Datsun dealers will donate $100 in John Candelaria's name to his favorite charity, which is Children's Hospital. Let's go down now to the field and get some words from Jim Rooker. Jim? Okay, thank you, John. And Mike Eastler with that big home run in the second inning, Mike, you tied the game. What kind of a pitch? It looked like a good one that Seaver threw you. Seaver got it kind of low and in. He was just trying to get ahead of me. He didn't want to fall too far behind me. Seaver's a veteran pitcher, so I'm trying to be ready. I'm trying to be aggressive. He gets the ball, I get the head of the bat on the ball. And the wind was kind of blowing out a little bit, and it got caught up in the current and went out the ballpark. When you go to bat against a pitcher like Tom Seaver, Mike, what do you look for? Do you have the tendency to think back to the days when he would really throw it up there because now he doesn't have that good stuff like he used to? The thing with Seaver, you can't think too much because he's the type of get ahead of you. He'll pump that fastball in there when you're looking for something else, and you can't guess. He still could rush it up there a little bit. He's not just lolling, um, lolling the ball up there. He's still got a little heat behind it. The thing is, you got to be aggressive against Tom. What about that big breaking pitch we saw three times tonight? He didn't get it over. The thing is, I think he tried to show you that to kind of get you looking and waiting back, and then he'll pop that fastball by you or that slider. The time I struck out, he threw a good fastball to second pitch after he threw a changeup. Then he threw a slider outside and caught the outside corner. So with Seaver, you just got to be ready. When he throws that off-speed pitch, you want to take that pitch. You can't really hit it no place. So but you got to be ready for the next pitch because he'll pump up on you and you try to get ahead. Let's talk about a slider. Slider, he just tried to cut the ball. It's not a big slider. It's just enough to throw you off. You give up on the ball. A couple of strikeouts he had on the outside corner of the plate on some of the left-handed hitters, that's what he was throwing. Them. What about the fact that Junior Ortiz doing the catching for the Mets would have been with us earlier in the year? Could he tell a guy like Tom Seaver, who's won 270 games, how to pitch you guys? Oh, definitely so. I, I really think that he went over the game at the beginning of the game and went over our hitters. You know, he sees us in spring training. He's been seeing us for the last five or six years. I'm sure he gave Tom some, you know, some tips, but thing is, we're aggressive, we're playing great, and everything's going good. Seaver pitched great, Candelaria and Guante a little better. Oh, Guante did a super job. Candy went out there hard and just did a super job. Um, that's where we're going now. We just got to keep going. Everything's looking good. Mike Eastler kept going with the home run tonight. He tied the game. Tony Pena won it with a home run. Now let's go back upstairs to John. Thank you very much, Rook, and to Mike Eastler. Appreciations, two to one, the final score. Two runs, four hits, one error for the Pirates. One run, four hits, no errors for the Mets. Candelaria, the winner, is 10 and six. Seaver, the loser, is six and 11. Eastler and Pena with home runs. Tony, the game winner. Guante gets the save. That winds up Pirate Baseball for tonight. Be sure to join us again tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock when the Pirates once again take on the New York Mets in game three of this series. Tonight's game has been sponsored in part by Budweiser Light. The best never comes easy. That's why there's nothing else like it. By Nissan, builders of high mileage, high quality cars and trucks for 50 years. Available at your Datsun dealer. By Atari, maker of real sports video games. So real, they'll make your muscles ache. And by your local Pepsi-Cola bottler, who invites you to take the Pepsi challenge. Tonight's game has been produced by Ray Markoff and directed by Bill Webb. Our coordinating producer, Doug Kennedy. Associate producer tonight, Regis Kalaney. Electronic graphics by Gary Sassman. Our network control engineering supervisor, John Komar. Technical director tonight, Joe Raddick. Video by Bill Artsberger. Production and technical facilities provided by Unitel Mobile Video. The Pirates have won nine straight on the road. They have taken the first two games of this series. This is John Sanders for Lanny Frateri and Jim Rooker saying good night from Chase Stadium. The final again tonight are Pittsburgh Pirates 2, the New York Mets 1. This is the Pirate Television Network.